saying that we know how to build a pot around here at Capital Casino. Good <laughs> 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 Before we get started, uh, a somber note, as many of you already heard, uh, Doyle Brunson passed away uh, last week. And for those younger people, they, they know stories of him. Um, I'm not that old that I know personal stories, but it was the very first poker book I ever bought was, was his. Uh, you can see it right here in the background. Uh, it's not a first edition, I'm not that old, but it is the second edition. I bought it when I was going through college and um, it was great reading for me because at the time I played basketball and Doyle was an ex-basketball player. So um, just want to give a little moment of silence and thank him for everything he did for the, uh, the poker world. I'm at Capital Casino playing the 1-3 game, buying for $500, first hand off the deck. Um, player opens for 10 to my right. I look down at ace-king offsuit. Good enough to put in a raise, I make it 40. Player in late position decides to call the 40 cold. He's more of a conservative player, so I'm putting him on a pretty tight range here. Like big face cards, medium-sized pairs. So the three of us are going to go see a flop with 124 in the center. Flop comes out, well, not exactly what I was expecting. 10 9 9. So it looks pretty good. Uh, first player puts in a quick check. I figure I'm mostly up against over cards, hands like King Queen, Queen Jack, the occasional Ace 10, maybe Jack 10. The only really hand I'm worried about is the player in, uh, behind me having a hand like pocket tens because he could have that, but that's only like three combinations. He thinks for a while after I bet $65 and puts in the call. So I'm really hoping that he has something like queen jack, king jack, king queen, calling for a gut shot, maybe some sort of backdoor flush draw. The player who first opened for $10 now thinks for a very long time before deciding to put in the call. I don't think the caller to my right has a very strong hand at all, so I'm more concerned with the other player behind me. Turn card comes is a five of clubs, does not complete any of the draws. If he had a draw, he might continue. I might be able to give him to fold a hand like ace-10, thinking that I might have an overpair. So I'm going to be aggressive. I'm just going to go for it, and uh, let's just shove the chips in there and see what happens. So I go all in. He thinks about it for maybe about 10 seconds before putting in the call. And the way he puts in the call, I feel like I am toast and I need a whole lot of help if any help would help. He calls for a 10 on the river. So I think he has pocket 10s and he shows pocket 9s. So he flopped quads. I don't think Ace King is going to beat quads. Nice hand. All right, this has got to be one of the craziest bomb pots I have ever played or ever seen. It's only a $10 bomb pot. How bad can it really get? Anyway, we see a flop of 9-8 deuce with two spades. I peek down at the seven of spades and decide to check it without looking at my next card. Player to my left bets $25. Small bet into a $100 pot. He gets called in one, two, three, four, five different spots as it comes back around to me. And now I see I have flopped a open end straight draw with a four flush. I figure I have two options here and folding is not one of them. 
I can either put in the call and realize my equity and uh, hopefully make my hand before I put more money in the pot. Uh, could be a smart thing to do. But with a $25 bet and a bunch of $25 calls, I mean, how strong is everyone? I mean, no one put in a big bet. No one put in a raise. I got to believe that they're kind of weak. I figure let's go ahead and put in a good size raise here and maybe we'll get some folds. And if we do get called, we got a pretty good hand to fall back on. We got tons of equity and there's a lot of dead money out there. So I make it $200. Player to my left, the original better for the $25. Doesn't waste too much time before sticking his chips in. He has uh, about uh, $33 more than I put in. So 233 total. Uh, the next player thinks for a while. He's the one that uh, flopped quads the previous hand and I, I doubled up. He also makes the call for the additional amount. At this point, I'm thinking, well, everyone else with some sort of drawing hand is getting better and better odds for it. And this might kind of avalanche itself into a big snowball. And that's exactly what happens. The following player goes all in. He goes all in for 275. Uh, a couple of people make what they consider tight folds. And it comes back around to the player uh, on my right. He ends up shoving all in for $606. Of course, I am not going anywhere. I put in my money. Well, then the final player decides, hey, what the heck, I'll put in mine too. We do have a little side pot, a dry side pot that we can bet on. We both have about 50 or $60 left. Um, but the main pot, yes, $2,500 and change for a $10 palm pot. Five players all in. I got an open end straight and a flush draw. Hmm. What are the chances? What are the chances? Well, let's soon find out. Turn card comes is a king of diamonds. Not good. I check. He checks behind. River card comes a nine. I say I miss. He rolls over nine, eight for a full house, which is good for the whole pot. Now, I bet you're wondering what some of the other players had. I did not see any of the other hands, but I did ask around, and this is what we were up against. Of course, I had the seven, six of spades. The winner had the nine, eight. There was a jack-10 there for a straight draw. Someone folded king-8, which made the uh, top two pair on the turn, but they folded early. A uh, player also had 7-6 for the low end of the straight. Someone else had a 5-3 of spades for the small flush draw. Well, I took the high variance play, got my money in with 28% equity. Not too bad, but we bricked out to be expected 70% of the time. Oh, well. If you would have took me for a walk like you promised, you would have been 10 minutes later to the casino. That 10 minutes could have saved you almost $1,000. So next time, take me for a freaking walk. So you might say we're off to a rough start. Uh, the only good thing about the uh, that last hand is that there's a lot of stuck players in there and they're all reloading. So the game's getting really, really juicy. I buy another $1,000 worth of chips and uh, I might be able to get it back fairly quickly on this hand. Player opens for 15. I call on the button for the 15. And then the player with a very big stack, the one who flopped quads, the one who won the bomb pot, he puts in a raise to 55. Now, he is a conservative player. So when he does put in this raise, I'm putting him on aces, kings, maybe, maybe queens, but mainly aces or kings. And if I can flop a set here, I can double through them, get even in one hand. So I put in the call, so does the player to my right, who also has a pretty good size stack. Flop comes queen, eight, four, two diamonds. Not the ideal flop. Player bets out for $45. That's a cheap enough price where I'm interested. Player to my right folds. I got a straight flush draw here, so I'm going to put in a call. Hoping for a seven. And we get the Ace of Diamonds. Really interesting card. Well, my opponent had Aces. They now made a set, and it's top set. If they had Kings, they're now afraid of the Ace and the Flush. But they could have a King of Diamonds for a redraw. And we're both very, very deep. He checked. 
I wimp out and decide to check it back, just trying to realize any equity I might have. Where they start to bet, I muck quickly. I know I'm toast. They either have aces, set of aces, or pocket kings. They did show pocket kings, but they did not have the diamond. So I missed out on a little opportunity there to make a play. I think a big bet there on the turn, either representing diamonds or representing the ace, might have put him in a tough spot, but I don't know whether he would be folding or not. We'll never know. We look down at uh, Queen Jack suited. There is a raise to $19, and I put in the call from the cutoff. We also get a call from the player in the small blind who has been extremely hot. He's been winning winning just about every other hand, if not more. And I'm a little worried. I should have picked a different seat. Flop comes out. 10-7 deuce. Two hearts. No clubs. I got some weird backdoor straight draw. Yeah, I'm not betting. It gets checked around. We get to see a free turn card, which comes to the Queen of Hearts. It's good that we got a pair of queens now. It's bad because that player in the middle who's on a heater leads out for $25. Well, the other three players in the pot all decide that they do not want a piece of his action at this point because he's been, like, pounding the table. He has almost $3,000 in his stack. He started with 329 minutes ago. I put in the call for $25. Got to see that river card. And it comes probably the best card I can get, a queen of spades, right? So I got trips now with a jack kicker. It doesn't slow him down. He bets out for $50. I'm not sure, but I can't let it go. I tanked for a while and finally put in the call, expecting to be beat. Uh, but he showed king high flush draw with a pair of sevens. Oh, he is vulnerable. There's a $15 open from the player to my right. I look down at ace jack offsuit. Decide to three bet to $45. The small blind, uh, who has a good size stack himself, uh, puts in the call for the 45. So does the player to my right. So we're going to end up going three ways to this uh, flop with $136 in the pot. Flop comes out king 10-3 with two spades. Not the greatest flop. It was against one player. I might go ahead and see bet this. But when both players check, I decided to take my free card, which happens to be the beautiful queen of clubs. We make the nut straight. First player kind of looks like he's interested before checking. Player to my right checks quickly. I, of course, am going to be betting. I figure I'll go $90 here. It's a pretty good size. Should get some action now. Some of the draws that are available, if they have a hand like maybe two pair, like king queen or queen 10, or slow played something like uh, pocket threes or pocket tens, I can uh, get a raise out of them. Player in the small blind tanks for a while before finally putting in the call. I get the sense that he is probably drawing live here to my straight. Either he has something like two pair, maybe he has like a king jack type of hand, or some sort of flush draw. Um, I think he's drawn live. The other player ends up folding out. And we see the five of clubs on the river. Biggest blank in the world. I love it. I absolutely love it. He checks again. I'm debating on size here. Uh, I decided to go for $200. Um, it could be a bluffy bet. It could be uh, some sort of steal. I think he, if he has two pair, he's going to pay me off. If he has a misdraw, there's no chance. He tanks for a very long time. Probably close to three minutes. He finally decides on releasing his hand. I believe he had two pair. I guess we'll never know. About a half hour later, I pick up ace, king of spades from under the gun, open for 15. It's folded to the player at the end of the table who puts in a raise to $40. This is the same player from the previous hand who folded the two pair. It's folded back around to the big blind. He decides he wants to call for the $40, and this is a perfect spot to put in additional pressure. I got a very good hand, and I got someone making a kind of a weak call. Of course, the player at the end of the table could have something good, but he's king of spades. It's good enough to put in a big raise. I would also squeeze with weaker hands than this, of course. So when I have something good, let's squeeze with that. Might get a loose call from somebody. So I make it 180. I figure this is big enough to... Uh, 
get the riffraff out. Still looks like some sort of crazy squeeze play, which I am getting uh, known for around here. And the first player folds out. So he was my main concern. He could have had something like, you know, pocket jacks or tens. Uh, he lets it go. He comes back around to the player on my right. I expect him to fold, but he surprises me by putting it in the call. Flop is a good one. It comes ace high. He checks it over to me. I feel like he either has a weak ace or absolutely nothing. Um, so I debate on whether I want to kind of go ahead and lead with this or not. If I check this back and he has a weak ace, he would want to protect it by firing on the turn. And if he doesn't, I don't think the free card's going to hurt me too much. We see a return card of a five of hearts. He checks again. At this point, I realize he doesn't have much at all. Maybe he has a, a queen at best. He might have picked up some sort of flush draw. So when he checks again, I'm not going to mess around this time. I'm just going to put in a, a good size bet, like two thirds pot. I make it $260. He does not believe me, but I don't think he has anything that uh, is worth while. So after a long, long tank, he finds the fold and we move on to the next hand. I was staying very aggressive all through the day. Uh, this is a, an example. I have Jack eight suited in the cutoff, got a couple limpers. I'm going to put in a raise to 20. I get end up getting two callers for the $20. So the three of us are going to see a flop, which comes out ace high. Not a very good flop for Jack-8 suited, but they both check. I have an aggressive image. I'm going to continue. I see bet on the flop, and they both end up folding. You don't really get to see too many of these hands because they're kind of boring, but I just wanted to let you know that I am keeping the pressure on as much as possible. Well, again, we wake up with a real hand. This time we have Ace-King in the plus one position. Player limps in. I raise to 20. And I get a couple callers, and then the player at the other end of the table kind of pauses for a while, like he's thinking about raising, and then he puts in a call. I've seen players do this uh, frequently when they have a good pair, but not a great pair, like something like jacks or tens, and they don't want to face a big re-raise. And me opening up for $20 from the plus one position, I usually have big hands. So they play it conservative. Flop comes out 10 high. Uh, nothing for me here. Um, I'm just going to check and surrender to any significant action. Player bets $30. The player at the far end of the table uh, flats the $30. Player to my right also puts in the call for the $30. And it's only going to cost me $30 to continue. But my hand is very face up. And I hate playing hands face up. So I'm just going to get out of the way and put in the fold. Turn card comes, ace of clubs. Yep, I would have made top pair, top kicker. But this is one of the reasons why I fold is because hands like this. My hand is completely face up. Player bets for 60. Another player raised to 200. I'm thinking he has at least two pair at this point. Player to my right ends up folding, saying that he had two pair. The other player ends up folding. Player at the end of the table said he had pocket tens. We have a cutoff open for $15. It's folded to me. I got ace jack in the big blind. Gets a cutoff open. Definitely worth three betting. I put in the three bet to $50. He puts in the quick call and we're going to go heads up to a flop. He has a fairly short stack. Uh, maybe only about $75 remaining in it. Flop comes out. Ace, 10, 4. Flop top pair. Decent kicker. We could be out kick, but... Uh, and of course, I'm going to bet it. I bet for $30. He does the old uh, look back, heavy sigh, don't know what I'm going to do, and then shoves all in. Uh, usually this indicates I, I am toast, but it's only like another 40 something dollars more. He might have a hand like Ace-10, Ace-King, Ace-Queen. He is a newer player, so... He could have just about anything, but for 40 bucks, I don't think I can uh, fold this hand. I go ahead and I stick in the call. I guess it was $46 more. 
And we get to see a run out, which comes to Jack. Hey, I got top two now. River is a queen of clubs. He wants me to show first. I said, I called you. Then he rolls over pocket tens. Yep. Kind of walked into that one. It doesn't always work when you uh, raise with ace jack. All right, I've been raising a lot from under the gun. Here, I happen to have aces while I do it. So I make it $15. Same sizing I would use normally. I get a call and then a player decides to raise to $45. That's a good result. That reopens the betting for me. The next player puts in the call for the $45, which is even better news. I love it. And then the player after him starts counting out chips for his $45. And I go, wow, this is good news. He puts in the call. The other players all fold out and it comes back around to me and I got an easy decision here except for the amount. Now the person on the far end of the table to the right has a fairly short stack. I'm not, I'm totally discounting his hand at this point. Um, far end of the table to the left has a pretty good size stack and the initial razor or re-razor I should say has about four or five hundred dollars in his stack. So I decided to put in a raise to 190. And the reason I did this is if the player with the, uh, who was the re-raiser probably has a hand he just wants to go with or he'll fold. I don't see him calling with his stack size. And if he does go with the hand, I want his raise to be big enough to reopen the betting in case the player at the end of the table decides to come along. Anyway, after a, some sort of a tank, the player who was the initial re-raiser folds. And the player at the end of the table now thinks for a while and decides to make the call for the 190. The other player to the right at the end of the table goes all in for his remaining stack. There is like $118 side pot uh, brewing. So with 487 in the main, 118 on the side, we see a flop that comes 10, 8, 6 with two diamonds. I do have the ace of diamonds, so that's a good thing. Less likely he has a uh, ace high flush draw. But with the board that wet, I am not going to give him a cheap price to draw if he has a draw. If he flopped a set, he got me. I got uh, some sort of redraws to the flush and redraws to the uh, set, of course. I make a bet of $240. He tanks for a while and then finally ends up on a fold. So the good news is we're going to win that side pot. Uh, we got that all locked up and we get to see a run out with a pair of aces. Comes king of spades and then a three of spades. We show our aces and the uh, all in player says we are good. And we scoop a nice sized pot. The very next hand, I look down at six three of clubs in the big blind. There was a raise to $15. Two other callers I decided to call. We go four ways to a flop that comes queen high with two clubs. So I got flush draw and some weird uh, straight draw going on. Check it. The initial raiser puts in a bet, a continuation bet for $25. I get one other player putting in the call for the $25. And... Well, I think this is automatic. If you're going to play 6-3 of clubs pre-flop and you flop a 4 flush, yeah, you're going to be putting in $25. Here we go. Turn card comes is a beautiful 8 of clubs. We make our flush. First player checks. I put in the check. Player now in the middle position decides to bet for $50. Um, Kind of a little bit on the small side, I would say. If he was trying to protect a hand, he would maybe bet a little bit bigger. So it might be a type of bet that he wants some action on. So I kind of kind of got a little bit of a tickle in the back of my neck uh, when he bet for 50. Player to my right thinks for a little bit before sliding in the call for the 50. And here I am. I got the flush. And um, if you're going to play 6-3 of clubs pre-flop, flop a 4-flush and then turn to flush, and you check it and someone bets, I think you, like, have to check-raise it. Is I mean, well, that's the whole purpose of playing a hand like this, right? So I assemble my little check-raise, and I slide it on out there. It's now $235, and my opponent does not instantly fold, and he starts thinking. And I'm going, all right, he has something 
that he might not be afraid of my raise with. Maybe he has a queen of clubs and another club. Maybe I'm toast. Maybe I, I was drawn dead all along and got there and checked raise with a bad hand. Well, after, uh, I don't know, what seemed like an hour, but probably only about a minute, he decides to shove all in. My stomach is doing flips right now, thinking that, all right, I've been fighting back all day long. I get within a, like a couple hundred dollars of being even, and then I uh, play a hand like 6-3 suited from the big blind and get myself into trouble. Well, let me uh, think about what I want to do. Player to my right, thanks for a little bit before finally folding. I get a count to see how much more it is. It's like 140 something dollars more. $140 for a $940 pot. Yeah. Even if I think that he might have a flush there quite often, I don't think I can lay it down. I'm not in love with putting in the money here, but I'm just getting too good of a price. He might be doing this with, say, a queen with a ace of clubs as a redraw or maybe a hand like mate, pocket queens or pocket nines. He just decided to go with it. Yeah, it's going in. I'm not in love with it. We're looking for a run out. That's, uh, yeah, I might be drawing dead. Heck. At least I got some change co coming back when I put my money in. We see a river card of a deuce of clubs. Not a good card for a small flush. But he rolled over jack 10 for a straight. So he decided his straight was good enough to go with. If he had a bigger stack, I don't know what I would have done. Well, I played for a little bit longer, but that was the last interesting hand of the day. Ended up making a nice comeback from that awful start. Was in the game for $2,000. Cashed out for $2,290. So we won $290. Yeah. You know, if you tell someone you won $290, they probably said, oh, that's a pretty boring day. But uh, this day was not so boring. Lots of interesting spots. And that bomb pot, oh my God, what a bomb pot. We sure know how to build a bomb pot, right? $10 bomb pot turned into over $2,500. Woo! It would have been nice to win that one. Oh, well. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't liked, subscribed, or hit that notification bell, please do so. Tell a friend. Get some more uh, viewers coming on here. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone's uh, comments. I try to answer all of them when I can. I might miss one or two uh, during the time. You know, YouTube is not uh, perfect and neither am I. Once again, thank you for watching. I do appreciate your support. Until next week, I hope you run good at the tables, and uh, we'll see you back here soon.